Hello. Uh, my name is Naomi Cedar. I have been writing code and teaching people how to code for 30 years. Uh, I am the head of a programming team for a company called Dick Blick Art Supplies, uh, the largest supplier of fine artist supplies in the US. Uh, I'm chair of the Python Software Foundation, which manages the Python programming language and its community around the world. And I'm founder of a Hack Day series called Transcode. Hello, I'm Fabienne Schmidt. I'm a French journalist from the daily economic newspaper Les Echo. And uh, I'm with uh, Naomi. And uh, Naomi is uh, going to talk with us about her experience as a transgender and uh, um, everything uh, uh, what, um, what you're going to tell us is uh, based on your own experience and observation. So when did you all decide that you were female or male? Do you remember? I don't remember making such a decision, I always knew. And that was a problem. Because, you see, being transgender, I always knew, but when I was born, society, the world, took one look at me and decided I was wrong. Uh, as a child, I had no word even for what I was. But I knew, as children do, that I could never speak of it, I could never be that, because society wouldn't allow it. Uh, at the age of 13, I uh, saw, for the first time, a magazine article describing transgender people, and I knew that was me, and I knew even more then that this was something that the code of society would not allow. This was a code that valued men and devalued women and had no place at all for someone who would transition from being a man to being a woman. There was no hope as long as I accepted uh, this uh, code of society and I did accept it for many, many years until I began to understand that I must either break that code or die. And I wasn't ready to die. So you broke the code when you decided to live as a woman, authentically as a woman, um, over slowly dying as a man. And for example, you broke the code when you decided not to hide, but stay openly involved in tech companies. Can you give some of the few examples of you breaking the codes? Yes, um, I broke the code uh, as um, a woman continuing to work in uh, technology. In fact, in the three years after I transitioned, I helped start two companies. Uh, this was, in fact, maybe a little bit of a risky thing to do. And the men who were working beside me at the same level did not feel the need to take that risk. Uh, but I did. Um, I broke the code when I started speaking about my experiences in the hope that I could uh, help support the cause of women and marginalized groups in technology generally. Uh, I spoke at um, PyCons and other conferences uh, describing my life both as a man and as a woman in tech, and trying to call attention to the many differences in the ways that men and women are treated and are valued. And each time you broke the code, you could see how differently women were treated. And uh, you were talked on to, you were treated as stupid, and uh, what else? Uh, it, it, it is true, it seems as though the world thought that when I transitioned I had forgotten everything I knew about technology. That wasn't true. Um, it's, it's also true though that I discovered something else that surprised me, which was that I became invisible. Uh, the first uh, Python conference I went to after I transitioned, I actually was worried that maybe people would have a problem, that maybe uh, there would be harassment, something like that. 
Uh, that actually was not true. What happened was that the women that I knew, even slightly, recognized me and all was fine. The men that I knew, in many cases that I had known for a long time, could not see me. Uh, one, one man that I knew for 10 years we kept walking by me as though I wasn't there till finally I stepped in front of him, said hello, and he was shocked he hadn't seen me. Uh, another person stood behind me in the queue for coffee talking about the event that I was running. I had known him for years. He also did not see me. This was a surprise because I just wasn't aware to the extent which, in our society, Men are socialized, are trained to ignore women in professional contexts. Uh, so, so it was quite shocking. I also uh, discovered the, uh, the double standard that uh, women are, are subjected to the much stricter, stricter judgments placed against women. This is even more the case with trans women. You can be too feminine, that's bad. You can be not feminine enough, that's bad. You can speak too loud, that's bad. You can speak too softly, that's bad. Uh, you do this, that's bad. My first performance review, after I transitioned, I was told I was too nice, I was not tough enough. Then two sentences later, I was told I was unapproachable and people were afraid of me. How do you do that? So having seen things on both sides, um, you realize that even most women do not fully appreciate the difference between how men and women are valued. This is true. I have actually been uh, in groups of men when they think there are no women around. Um, and so I think that, that most women do not understand. Um, a former student of mine put it this way. She asked me, you have been in disguise as a man for a long time. Are they as sexist as I think? I said, no, Lila, they're worse. Uh, there is a continual assumption that, that women don't know what they're talking about, that they're being emotional, but also that they will fix things, they will make things work, they will get food. Uh, the first time I was involved in organizing something after I was transitioned, uh, my automatic assignment as a trans woman, food committee. Uh, and, and this, this could, is, is sort of throughout uh, that, that these sorts of things uh, continue to happen. I never saw in a group of men anyone call out another man for being sexist or homophobic or transphobic. Okay, maybe it happened, it never happened when I saw it. It's almost as though there is a code that you should not do that in a group of men. I would say that is a code that men should break. So can you explain us how you, you discover ways to cope while breaking the code? Uh, it, is, it is always very difficult to go against a code in the society that you live in. Uh, the thing I think that helps me the most is to not focus on what other people's expectations are and to do that, I instead focus on the things that I value. For me, I value kindness, I value compassion, I value honesty. Uh, these are the things that I remind myself of that I think about when I doubt myself the most, which is often. Naomi, did you feel the imposter syndrome? So, I have been an imposter for many, many years, a real imposter, if that makes sense. An expert. Uh, so, uh, and when I thought every time I was having a conversation with someone, if you knew the truth about me, you would probably reject me. I would probably lose my job. There were many things that would happen. This was not made up. Uh, my opinion on imposter syndrome is that it is all too often presented as a weakness, as a failing for the people who have it. It's a weakness of the mind. You must fix this. Everyone says, I must get over my imposter syndrome, uh, as though it is a, 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 a disease. Uh, what I will tell you is that I believe that this is nothing more than the fact that we have seen all our lives the negative attitudes 
of society towards us, whoever we might be. And we have internalized those attitudes so that when we try to go beyond what society expects for us, we feel this, oh, they're going to catch me, they're going to catch me. It is normal. You are not broken. Society is broken. And we need to go beyond that. So in doing this, we're, we're actually being strong. Don't be ashamed of imposter syndrome. Naomi, there's a quote from Laverne Cox, who is a trans actress of Orange is the New Black, the Netflix series. And she says, it is revolutionary for any trans person to choose to be seen and visible in a world that tells us we should not exist. This is, in fact, Naomi Cedar's revolutionary act, and this means breaking the code for a better world. Thank you.